bone length. Using unit cells, we can also determine how long the bonds of molecules are. And um, even though there's other techniques to approach this particular uh, task, when it comes down to big molecules and complex molecules, um, X-ray crystallography and unit cell determinations are basically the way to go. All right, now um, there is a little bit of trigonometry that goes into this, which I'm going to walk you through in order to see what the formulas end up being. At the end, you could just remember what the formulas are, and you'll be fine in terms of finding out the value. But okay, uh, we're going to restrain ourselves to cubic structures specifically. Not that this cannot be done with tetragonal or thorombic um, and rhombohedral structures, but you know, just to keep it simple, we'll make this a cube. All right, now what that implies is that all of the sides, you know, height, length, width, they're all of the same value. So if this is A, that's A, and that's A in terms of the value of the length. For a primitive cubic structure, as the one depicted here, technically atom E and E are touching each other. So quite simply, the bond length is the, the length of the cube itself. In that sense, there's no, no extra real calculation. You just look at that length and say, yeah, that's the, that's the length of the actual bond. But as like we have it, most cubic structures rarely ever fall under the primitive categorization. Most likely than not, you have body-centered cubic structures or even face-centered cubic structures. Now, in the case of the body-centered cubic structure, the complexity is definitely seen almost right away. Uh, first of all, what we're trying to find out is not chlorine-chlorine bonds, because we don't have chlorine-chlorine bond lengths since they're both negatively charged. But what we do have is chlorine to cesium bond length. And notice that the cesium is right in the middle of the cube. So the bond length will have to go from one corner of the cube down to the middle of the cube. Okay, so to make that happen, basically what we're going to have to do is draw a long hypotenuse starting from one of the corner chloride atoms going all the way down to the opposite end of the cube uh, where there's another chloride. And in essence, the hypotenuse is going to account for twice the atomic, well, in this case, the ionic radius of the cesium chloride bond, the ionic bond length, in other words. Uh, and notice here that I'm also depicting another diagonal, the diagonal in between the bottom face of the cube, which technically corresponds to the adjacent side of the right triangle that I drew here in blue. Okay, so the way this needs to be approached then is to first look at the bottom face of the cube, which I'm highlighting here in red. And what we're going to do is determine the value of the first hypotenuse, the red hypotenuse, which is once again, the adjacent side of the big triangle that I've drawn. And for this, we technically just use the Pythagorean theorem. We have a value of A for the opposite side, a value of A for the adjacent side of the right triangle on the bottom face of the cube. So that means that both A and B are basically the same value. I'm just call it A and A. So C squared is going to equal twice the value of A squared. And that in and, of, in and of itself means that C, if you take the square root, is going to be the square root of 2 times A. So that's the value of the hypotenuse of the bottom face of the cube. Now remember, that hypotenuse is technically the adjacent side of the big triangle that we drew originally. And the premise right here is that we did the calculation shown on the left side such that we would get the value of the adjacent side of the triangle. So now what we're going to do is reapply the Pythagorean theorem. We know that one of the sides is equal to a, the other side is equal to the square root of 2 times a. If we square a, we're just going to get a squared. If we square the square root of 2 times a, we're going to get 2a squared. And then if we add the a squares together, we get c squared equals 3a squared, which means that c itself equals the square root of 3 times a. And that's the value of this entire hypotenuse. But because the hypotenuse is in fact twice or basically two bond lengths together, 
you're going to divide the value of the hypotenuse by 2. So the actual bond length of the cesium chloride bond is the square root of 3 divided by 2 times the value of the length of the cube. And if you want to just remember this formula, that's fine. You can apply that formula to figure out the, um, the ionic bond length for a body center cubic structure. If you do have a face center cubic structure, however, um, you're going to have to apply the following. First of all, uh, you will have the cation or you know anion, depending on the structure, on the middle of one of the faces. So you could just focus entirely on the bottom face of this cube and say, well, we're going to have to go through x, m, and x just in that first diagonal. So automatically, we're going to get the length of the hypotenuse to equal twice the ionic radius of the mx bond. So the hypotenuse, which will be the square root of 2 times a, simply will need to be divided by 2 to get the proper bond length of the mx molecule. And one addendum that I need to add to this is that in some cases you will have phase center structures that will contain an atom in the very middle. Right? So it will be like a mix of a body center with a face center cubic structure. In that case, you will treat the problem as if it were a solely body center cubic structure. Okay, So if you use square root of 2a over 2 for a face center structure that also contains the middle center, the middle atom in the in the unit cell, so basically merging body center and face center, um, this formula will basically get you the wrong answer. You got to you got to go back to a body center type of approach if you have face center with body center combining one unit cell altogether. Otherwise, if it's a regular face center cubic with no middle atom present, then you simply apply the formula that I show you right here. Okay, so at that point, you just make sure to input the value of A, which is the length of the unit cell, and you'll find out what the actual bond length is. And this length could be given in angstroms, it could be, be given in nanometers, picometers, uh, so any type of length unit will apply. Alright, now in the next video I will introduce to you the idea of the lattice entropy and this is probably the most uh, mathematically robust portion of the lecture. Um, it does involve some thermodynamics and you know a little bit of uh, recollection on some of the terms we've talked about in previous lectures. So see you in the next video.